Hey guys, welcome out to the range. Last night I was uh, going through comments as I do uh, every evening and um, someone had made a comment about, um, they were asking me what were all the things that I was carrying and why. And I immediately pulled out my phone and I thought, yeah, yeah, I definitely, definitely need to do a, a video on that. Um, while I don't, I don't like pocket dump videos, and yet at a certain level, this kind of sort of is a pocket dump video. Um, and the notation that I wrote was, EDC pocket dump include your belt, ring, and glasses. All righty then. That is now marked. And let's talk about that. Okay, now I don't have any paint on them. I was just painting targets. Right now I'm waiting for the targets to cure. They're all facing the sun. I um, have to put the stencils back on them. I taught a class out here a few days ago. And the faces on my targets were totally obliterated. We had so much fun, guys. It was such a blast. No pun intended. So anyways, um, the question was made regarding the blade that I had. Ironically, that video is... The one that I released last night was filmed uh, a month ago. And since that time, things have changed because, and I will begin here, because of a knife sheath that I received from Matthew's Fabrication. Um, I went, a couple of months ago now, I went shopping online trying to find a, a uh, good quality sheath for the TDI K-Bar knife that I like. My friend John Benner made the TDI K-Bar knife, that curved one, designed to reach around and open up the arm of a bad guy who was trying to get your, your sidearm off of you. And so anyways, uh, it was designed for police officers and uh, concealed carry practitioners to have the ability to, if someone goes for their knife, of course in this case, let's say that the knife, that the, that the, that the handgun is here, and someone reaches for your handgun, well, you clamp down on your handgun to try to keep it in its holster, and this hand would reach under your clothing, or if you're a police officer, it would basically reach behind your mag pouch and you'd pull the blade out and the blade is curved and it's designed for you to reach around the arm of the bad guy and pull and as you pull the blade cuts into the tendons and the hand literally has no choice but to open up so that's the knife that I carry and you guys in the video saw it here well now it's here and um, Matthew's Fabrication made a knife sheath for me uh, like I said I bought two of these um, I, whenever I buy something I, I want to clarify this point whenever I buy something I try to buy two of them um, because I'm looking for consistency. I want to see, can this person fabricate the same product twice precisely? So I bought two of them. Matthew, you're like, oh, I didn't realize what he was doing. That's what I was doing. Um, and beautiful, very, very high, very high quality. Listen, you don't hear much when it comes out. Now watch when it goes back in. You hear that? You have to push hard. As you notice, my pants headed south. You have to push hard. But that knife is in there, and that knife is in there good. And um, he has the, uh, the pull dots, which, as you can see, I'm having to pull hard to get them to come off, which is what you want. You don't want things that come loose easily. There we go. You want things that require a little bit of work for you to get off. All right, so... This is the knife sheath, and um, actually, let me get closer. You know what? Let me move that camera for you guys. The knife sheath is very, very high quality, very stoutly made, and it has this horn right here that when you grip your blade, you would push with your thumb, and you pull to get the blade out. And this is just your standard TDI blade. I went ahead and did a really fine stippling job, the same stippling job that you guys see on my handgun. I did on this knife blade, or on the, on the knife handle. And um, <clears throat> it makes the knife very easy to hang on to uh, when it's bloody or muddy, and I've experienced both. As you guys can see, the sheath is very high quality, very well made, um, and it's very thin, which is what I really like about it. And originally, I was wearing this knife here on my belt uh, horizontally, but when I got the sheath, I realized this sheath truly is designed to be oriented this way. And I thought, what a great opportunity to have this blade where it should be, because the sheath that these come with from K-Bar is dog crap. 
and nobody likes that thing. And um, so anyways, I decided to start wearing this on my side where it should be. And then to take the place of that blade, I went ahead and purchased a Shivworks clinch pick. What's interesting about this is I, I, I went, okay, it's, it's time to suck it up. It's just time to suck it up and buy that. And the price points on these have dropped dramatically. Why? Because they're being produced in China now. It is what it is, guys. You, you can't get everything U.S. made. Um, the, the sheath is, you know, it's, it's not the best quality. Matthew's Fabrication. Um, it's, not the, it's not the best quality on retention. Uh, I think I'm going to probably heat that and pinch it in a little bit tighter because if you were to pinch it in a little bit tighter, it would take care of that rattle. But anyways, the blade comes out nice and clean. And for those who don't understand, the clinch pick is sharp on the top rather than on the bottom. And the, the idea of the blade is it comes out like this, like let's say that someone's got their arms around you, or even if someone's in front of you, the blade comes out like this, rotates, and you can pull to start cutting, or if someone's arm is around you, you can present the blade, and as you, and as you draw the blade, it flays the person's arm. And this is what would be known as a get off me knife or get off me blade and um, here's the little trick to getting it into its scabbard when you introduce it into the the sheath you press it's the complete opposite of what you want to do you press down so it's oriented like this on your body you introduce the blade and you run it hang on you run it along the bottom like this and then it locks in and here's why and i'll see if i can actually do it on camera No, didn't do it. Sometimes that very sharp point will catch on the inside of the sheath and it'll hang up and guys eventually it will tunnel and pick its way out through the sheath. So when you introduce the blade, carefully introduce it and then the motion is, let's not drop that, the motion is like that. So it's writing it in and now you know that it's locked in. So these are my blades. Well actually these are two of my blades. My third blade is a cold steel voyager 5.5 inch blade um, my nephew bought me one of these years and years ago as a gift i was still a police officer at the time and at the time tennessee did have a knife blade restriction i forget what it was some goofball number <clears throat> which wasn't being respected by uh by the bad guys <laughs> imagine that so with the governor we had at the time governor haslam the bill was presented and was signed into law that did away with the knife blade restriction and then I was so tickled pink that I could finally have this blade. So, really nice knife. Uh, I've had this thing forever. It swings open easily. Um, this is not meant to be a fighting knife. It, it can obviously be a fighting knife, but it, I, don't, I don't mentally use it that way, and I don't mentally go for it that way. These are my fighting blades, okay? This is the blade that I would draw if I actually had time to draw a blade, but as you noticed, I practice drawing it like that and even though I'm left-handed I carry it on my right side because if I am on the gun and for some reason need to get a knife out I'd like to have my support hand free to get the knife out and put the put the gun away and get on the blade so um, these are my knives <clears throat> then we go to the flashlights actually we'll go we'll go what's we'll go to what's in my left pocket here um, these are $26 hiking pants from Wrangler. Uh, buy them at Walmart. Uh, they have zipper pockets here and here. And if you guys ever watch uh, my Bible study videos that are done on Saturday morning, you guys will see me wearing this very similar stuff. I have a, an entire set dedicated for church that I wear on a, on a um, I'm sorry, I have a dedicated set for church. And then I have a dedicated set for just every day. And, I'll, and also, I also actually have a training pair. I just, I'm not wearing them right now. But anyways, um, Burt's Bees, um, beeswax, not chapstick, because chapstick is petroleum-based. And not only does it not help your lips, it actually promotes the drying and cracking of the lips, which causes a causality loop, and it locks you into chapstick. Yeah, they, are, they know that. However, chapstick is very good for field expedient preservation of blades and also for lubrication of firearms, so consider that. Um, I like uh, uh, Burt's Bees because it's 100% beeswax, it's natural, and this stuff ends up in your mouth, obviously, so you're better off potentially 
digesting beeswax, which I regularly chew. Um, my wife and I used to keep bees. We used to keep bees years ago. Actually, let me show you something real quick. When you go to close it, if you want to get the entire life, and these things are ridiculously expensive, if you want to get the entire life out of your lip balm, place very light pressure with your lip, and as you go to roll it back in again, you're pressing down with your lip, and it ensures that that column of beeswax won't separate from the jack screw on the inside. Anyways, we used to keep uh, bees many years ago, and one of the things that I really enjoyed doing was harvesting a little bit of um, honeycomb pop it in my mouth and I'd chew all the honey out of it and then I would just continue to chew the beeswax like gum and uh, by what I understand it's beneficial to the to the digestive processes so anyways moving on I always have a lighter with me um, and check it periodically to make sure that there's a good amount of fluid in it no I'm not a smoker I just always have a lighter with me and then my EDC light is a micro stream from Streamlight it is USB chargeable so it's like IPX something or another, um, water resistant, not waterproof, and um, and I keep it charged, and I keep it in my pocket, and this is not the light that I fight with. This is the light that I fight with. This is an Enforce TFX, and it is obscenely bright, uh, 700 lumens or something like that, 700 or 800 lumens, high low settings um last night my friend philip was over at the house and um i gave him one matt the lights you sent me one of them went to uh, philip and um uh my friend matt owns enforce anyways uh i gave him i gave philip one of the lights and as we stepped out the front door i said hey philip watch and i popped one of those one of those um uh oil pipeline dealies the, the propane pipelines that are buried in the ground the markers it's about 100 yards from my front porch it's got a 10 inch disc on it and I popped the light at it and he goes wow and I said yeah and I said can you notice you can see the trees behind that in the distance so yeah these lights are very very good and these lights are using a very similar head to what they've used historically for years and also what's on the WML X and I am the guy who would go to classes um, those of you who were at the Sentinel Concepts and uh, Centrifuge training class many years ago at Alliance Ohio you remember we were doing the night shoot and pretty much everybody everybody was struggling to get their shots and when i jumped up there with my wml uh, wml x everyone goes what was that well it was this head so people say what you want about enforce and yes enforce has had their teething issues but here's what enforce did enforce teethed in a digital age whereas streamlight and surefire also had teething issues because those of us who've been around long enough to remember that those companies also had teething issues they got to do it in the magazine era age and in the magazine era right or wrong <laughs> editorial staff was very skillful at uh, killing negative press on surefire products because surefire was doing such a bang-up job of fueling the industry I just realized you guys are probably getting a lot of rubbing noises off of this thing surefire was doing a bang-up job of fueling the firearms writers with free crap so not a lot of negativity was being said about surefire but guess what guys i spoke a lot of not negativity i spoke a lot of reality realism about surefire products they're not they're not then they were not the bees knees that they are now so anyways uh enforce tfx is my absolute go-to edc light um i'm sorry my my go-to fighting light um, doo -doo -doo -doo. right side is uh, driver's license and carry permit they both pretty much look the same here in Tennessee which I'm not going to show you bank card credit card um, Ranger band which is bicycle inner tube fits over here no snagging issue so if something were to rub past me it's not going to catch an edge of a wallet and start pulling at my pants spare mag is mag pull uh, GL9 21 rounders loaded with 115 grain full met I'm sorry 115 grain jacketed hollow point and we'll stop there for a second why 115 grain versus 124 grain that everybody else carries well because I used to sell body armor and I know what 115 grain jacketed hollow point or really what 115 grain period can do to body armor it it is moving so fast and it causes so much damage to the body armor panel 
that it really gets your attention. People are really focused on weight, on the weight of the bullet. But I'll give you a great example of this. Velocity versus bullet weight manifests like this. You shoot a 45 caliber 230 grain projectile at a vest and the bullet literally bounces off the vest and hits the ground. And this is off of a, um, off of a, off of a level two well, even sometimes level 2A. Um, yeah, actually level 2As, yeah. Level 2A panel with the trauma, uh, with the trauma pack taken out. We would, we would get about that close. You know, I'm not going to have my hand in front of this because it is chambered. We would have the gun about that close to the karate bob wearing the vest, and we'd pull the trigger. And you'd watch the round hit the vest, and then it would just fall on the ground. But 115 grain ball or 115 grain SXT, would tunnel into that vest and, and just really bind up in there. We would have to actually cut it out and it was still pretty hot when we'd get it out. So I look at projectiles differently than most everybody else in the industry does because I used to sell body armor. And body armor is nothing but a external manifestation of what the human body does when it is trying to, how can I put this? A vest is doing in a very thin, uh, in a very thin package, what the human, what, what, what tissue, what biological tissue does when it comes in contact with a high-speed projectile. Am I making that, am I making that, uh, am I putting that in a manner that you guys can understand? So when you see with your own eyes what a high-velocity projectile can do to matter, tissue, fabric, whatever, you start to go, aha. I would much prefer velocity, which is why you end up with a 55 grain um, full metal jacket round coming out of a rifle, 55 grains, as opposed to 115 grain or 240 grain or whatever of 9 mil, and yet that tiny little bullet is doing just incredible damage because it's moving so fast, while 115 grain 9 mil does really good damage, most especially with hollow point of today, does the kind of damage that you need to modify and or stop the behavior of the bad guy. My Glock, as you guys know, is a Glock 17 uh, Gen 3 that I've heavily modified, done all the framework myself, and then sent the slide to Doug Presson, and he did a bang-up job of, uh, of working on the slide. And I was teaching a class out here the other day, and one of the guys goes, I have to see your gun. So Ken, I ask you now, Ken is the student that wanted to look at the gun. Does it sound like a 1911? Because it is freshly cleaned. I don't know, but... Um, love this gun. I've, I've been working with this gun for years now and with the exception of just the occasional change out of springs, the gun is just beautiful. The only issues that I ever have with it are really with training ammo and I never used to have it. never used to have any issues, but now training ammo every once in a while is giving me issues. And no, my striker spring is new, so I know that it's not a fatigue striker spring, it's just training ammo is crap. Um, okay, so... Um, the last thing is, actually no, not really the last thing. Um, this is the Gat Caddy from Minuteman Defense. Skylar Gibbler um, gave me this years ago at a uh, talent defense class down in Alabama. And um, Skylar, I apologize that this never made it into a magazine article. My editor decided to can when I added this in your mag carrier into the article because you didn't buy uh, a page of advertising. And I know that someone's watching this video going, whoa, whoa, what'd you just say? Yeah, newsflash, guys. If you have a really great piece of gear as a writer, excuse me, and you try to put it into an article, some magazines, and the one I was writing for was kind of petty this way, um, will can a great piece of gear because the people making it didn't buy a page of advertising. For those that don't understand, this is the way it works. I go to a class or I get a piece of gear. I test that piece of gear. I really like this holster. I like the way it holds the gun. It's got a nice solid lock up. The loops are really good, blah, blah, blah. You know, positive things, right? And then I try to do an article. I'm sorry, I do an article. I write it into an article and then I submit the article. And then the editorial staff lays it all out and they contact the manufacturer and they say, hey, we're gonna feature your holster in an article. Would you like to buy a page of advertising? <laughs> And the manufacturer, if you were like Minuteman Defense, he's a lot like me. He's just a dude, you know, doing small time numbers, really great following, solid work, 
but he can't afford to be paying 2000 bucks for a page of advertising or whatever the price is nowadays. And he goes, oh, man, I'll, I'll pass, I appreciate it. And all of a sudden, my article goes and goes nowhere. Now, guess what? The majority of the time, you'll get paid for the article because they don't want to piss off the writers. They don't want to lose you. So they'll pay you for the article. But you keep waiting for the PDF proof, for the final approval, and you don't see it. But you have so many articles in the shoot that you forget. And then one day you go, wait a minute, where is that article? That's what happened here. This is a really great holster. But unfortunately, Minuteman Defense is pretty much done producing holsters. I don't really know what the story is there. Uh, but really high quality stuff. So uh, right now, my friend Philip and I are working on producing a, a uh, can't really say a copy of this because Kydex is Kydex is Kydex. But um, Philip was over last night. We were talking. I said I love this holster, and let's produce something similar to it because I want to produce my own Tier One Citizen concealment holster for you guys. Um, and you'll see when it comes out. It's going to be different than this, but close, close, but no banana. Um, and oh, the last two pieces are, no, last three pieces are my, um, my groove life. There we go. Silicone ring. Um, that green one that you guys saw me wearing for years, I've retired. It's in a little tin in my, in my dresser because I realized that that OD green basically said tactical and I don't want to have anything that says tactical. And someone's going to be like, yeah, you're wearing a hat with pine trees on. I'm sorry, you're wearing a hat with, I gave it away. You're wearing a hat with the American flag made, made of bullets. No, it's not. Those are pine trees. So, and I got news for you guys. Everybody in this part of Tennessee wears hats that have the American flag on them. So, whatever. Groove Life silicone rings made here in Tennessee, which I dig. Um, 35 bucks, something like that. I mean, think about it. The cost of jewelry is astronomical and you're talking 35 bucks for a good quality wedding band and the other issue that most people don't think about is when you draw your sidearm if you've got a if you've got a real piece of jewelry you see that gap right there that's created between my finger and the ring if this is real jewelry that same effect happens where it contacts the gun and it causes a slipping issue because this is surgical grade silicone it actually sticks to the gun so this actually is aiding my ring finger and sticking to the sidearm, which is really nice because when I'm holding this gun, I no longer feel like I'm wearing a piece of jewelry. And I used to feel like I was wearing a piece of jewelry when I had a regular wedding band. Uh, the other thing that I now wear is a Groove Life flexible belt. And you saw how easily that slid right out of my pants. Oh, behave. Um, this belt is uh, flexible this way but it will not it will not collapse this way it is truly suitable for firearms use in fact the the advertising media for this actually shows it being worn uh, with a firearm and really the only wear that I'm seeing so far is right there I've had it now for several months and I don't really perceive that that's really gonna go anywhere major but if it does I'll talk to Groove Life about it but um, $65 I think I paid for this. Actually, I think I paid less. Ultimately, I paid less than that because I bought an extra one for my wife and it dropped the price of both. But Dynamite, guys, support these companies. Really, truly support these companies because um, companies of this type are putting out really high quality product that um, that is definitely worthy of your money and of your time to support. And um, it's 1.4 something. It's just a skosh under 1.5 on the width of the belt. And like I said, really, really high quality. And yeah, someone's going, why is he running it through the loops as opposed to just undo? Okay, fine, I'll undo it, be quiet. I like things that are simple. I like things that work. I really, really like things that hide in plain sight. I'm really big on hiding in plain sight because I'm the guy that, be, that used to be the complete opposite. And um, so I go out of my way now to seek out products that help me hide in plain sight. And the items that I've shown you guys today definitely do that. Um, oh, the other thing that I wanted to show you is are my, my shooting glasses. These are 10 bucks. They're $10 Smith & Wesson shooting glasses. And I believe, yeah, this side, the left side, normally says Smith & Wesson. And this is actually a relatively new pair. 
I buy these probably 10 at a time and they just sit in, in, a, in a box on the shelf in my bedroom for years on end because I'll get seven, eight, nine months out of one pair before they get so pitted up from bullet fragmentation that they finally have to go. And, um, and we have a collection of these things sitting behind the television in case I've got new shooters. I'm like, hey, grab a pair. Um, but anyways, what I do is when I get a new pair out, I take um, that craft, that fine, like 180 grit, 200 grain or 220, um, crafting uh, sandpaper that's loaded onto foam. Uh, and what I do is I drizzle a little bit of 91% 90, isopropyl on it, and I will rub against the uh, Smith & Wesson and it erases it right off the glasses so that these just look like wraparound sunglasses, no name wraparound sunglasses. I wore these when I was a cop. In fact, these little legs, which snap in and out of the glasses, are the same set of legs that I have now been using since um, 2008. From one pair to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. Every video, in fact, every single one of the 600 videos on this channel are with this, with this pair of, uh, of legs with paracord. And the reason I set the height of it here really close to my face is so that they wouldn't go down far enough to scratch up against my shield when I'd be in uniform. So that if they would shift over, they wouldn't scratch into the shield. So that is why they're like that. And I love them, been using them for years. I've been hit multiple times in the face by fragmentation. So I can absolutely tell you without equivocation that they will suck up bullet projectiles and then some. And I believe that's it. Um, this answers the question, I hope, of what it is that I carry on a daily basis. The biggest thing that I would leave you guys with is this. Make your choices simple. Make your choices logical. Um, simplify your life because what you don't want is to have such a complicated setup that when something horrible happens, you have like a dozen variables to have to think through. Um, simple is best truly simple is best as always i thank you guys for watching god bless you all as you can tell i'm getting ready to shoot god bless you all get those guns out in practice have a good one